And when you turn up on a new water, it's very often difficult to try and track down where the fish are actually coming from, especially when you're pike fishing. Now this is what I call urban pike fishing environment. It's a sort of, I guess it's like a small park lake, city type park lake really. A lot of people always get a lot of hammer. Um, but it's day ticket, listen guys, no freebies. It's a day ticket. I've been in a local tackle shop, bought my day ticket. But nice to have it on a day ticket, to be honest. At least it's not syndicate, club, private, and band, and then all that business. At least you can actually physically get out and fish in an urban environment. And for me, these are the sort of places that people should be stocking quite heavily to get those youngsters out fishing. Anyhow, I'm digressing. So here I am, going to try and catch a pike out of a water I've never even seen before. There's a big island in the middle, big long elongated island, big long narrow one, sort of circular lake, about two or two and a half acres, something like that. So I'm going to be doing two things. I'm going to be using sprats for bait, which I'll show you in a second, but I'm going to be looking for the wind, whichever way the wind is on, left or right, right or left, I want to use the wind with a float to try and cast out there and let a belly go in the line and drag the sprat along. The dead bait can be anything, smelt, sardine, whatever, but I'm just happy to be, sprats were all I had left in the freezer. Let it drag around in the current, and that way I could sort of ignore it, keep an eye on it, but I could still cast and twitch a bait like sprat, something like that. That's what I'm going to be doing. Sardines could be anything. So I've got the best of hopefully both worlds, using that wind to my advantage, hopefully, to cover some more ground. Meantime, while I'm waiting for that dead bait static to go through, I can twitch away, jerking around the margins, around overhangs, brambles, anything like that, tree roots, trying to find out where the fish are. Now another tip is, if this is match fished, which it is, because there's peg numbers around there, you're going to get people continually fishing the same spots. That's going to be bringing those silver fish, as we call them, bream, roach, rudd, whatever, all in close. You know what's going to know they're there? That's right, the pike. So I'm opting for two things. I'm going to start on the other side of the island, because there I can actually see some pike floats hanging up in the tree. It also corresponds with the peg numbers where the guys go match fishing and some of the bigger match weights coming from. So I'm using the matchman's feed, as it were, that draw the small fish in, thereby drawing the pike in. I just need to cover the area and hopefully, sometime today, I'm going to catch a fish. OK, here's my pike drift, pike dead bait drifting method. There's a sprat. I've got a tiny little treble because it's obviously fished hard and I could use a small single, I just happen to have a small treble on this trace. A couple of swan shot, a sliding float here, stopped by, if you can see that up there, a shot, just a BB shot. And the local tackle shop said it's about seven feet deep, but you know, with weed growing off the bottom, maybe five. So I've got that set about four feet. Gonna cast that out across the wind, any drift, if I don't strangle myself with this lead first, I'm gonna cast it across the wind, just like this, and let it drift down as soon as it hits the surface, I shut the bait arm and I put the bait runner on. So I've got, I got double, I can see the float, but if I do miss it for a second, at least it's on the bait runner. And I can either put it in a rubber vest, or in this case, I'm going to lay it on the ground. But even while I've got this one out, and have been talking about it, look, I don't know if you might be able to see that belly in the line, in the dark green, it's starting to push, the wind's starting to push on that belly in the line. That's going to drag that float round to the right, which enables me to use my trusty twitch sprat here, a swan shot, a BB hook, and a sprat, not very big sprats, unfortunately, to twitch on the upwind side. I don't want to cast down, down, downstream, I nearly called it, downwind there, because I'm going to be casting into my own belly of line. So I'm going to cast out upwind of where the float is, let it sink, and this won't be affected by the wind, obviously, because it's sinking, Give it four or five seconds and just twitch away like this slowly. So I've got the best of both worlds. Do watch out when you've got, say, brambles or overhanging trees. Keep an eye on that belly in the line. I just drop this on bait runner. I pick up the other rod. Just lift that belly of line, just what we call shorten it up. Put the bait runner in again. And then the belly of line will get caught up down there in the brambles. It's just a way of, of covering both opportunities of drifting static dead baits through the water and twitching and tweaking. My oh God, it's got a guy flying an aeroplane there about two feet off the ground unless it was a motorbike. And don't neglect those margins. I pick a hell of a lot of fish out the margins, definitely.
Mind you, I'm only fishing for ordinary average pike. I'm not going for Gertie the 30. I haven't got time for that. I just want to catch something. Just get ready every twitch for as it goes slack. Ready to let your rod go like this so you can open the bait arm, let them take the bait properly. Guys, after about a gazillion casts, I've actually had a pickup, not on the float this time, but I think I've got a bump on the sprat. All I've done is just give him a second or two just to put the lead on the camera and hopefully he hasn't dropped it. Always quite exciting on a place you've never fished before. I think I lost him, have I? Oh, he's took me in a snag. Sweet, really sweet. I love it. Hour and a half of casting, and all I've done is branch out in the sport. I love it. Son of a gun. The thing is, I left the bait static now on the bottom, and I've put my float there. I'll just show you. The float, I'll turn this around so you can see. The float, there's the bank. The float's just sitting literally there. And my dead bait is just off these bushes, down off the end where I saw him peel off and when he was actually taking it. But I had Polaroids on early on, and it's a bit dark. I thought, I'm not going to see any fish come up. And I definitely, definitely pretty sure I saw a small pike come after that sprat. But he didn't hit it, so I'll go back to twitching and then chucking out my float and letting it drift around. Hopefully get the best of both worlds. Maybe I'll get lucky again. Look, bright, bright blue sky, sun's out, middle of the day. Not looking good for pike, is it really? Well, I've come around to the other side of that bay. There's a little spit sticking out. Third cast. I've got a pickup. I don't know if it's the same fish. I don't think it is. I'm going to tighten down, and hopefully this time he might still be there. Don't feel anything at the moment. Yeah, I've got a fish on. My goodness, what size is this going to be? It's not going to be a big one for sure. Hopefully you can see this, guys. Doing this all one-handed again. Definitely got a pike this time. Oh yeah, not a big fish. Not a big fish. Oh, it's just nice to catch a fish, isn't it? Just nice to catch a fish, I mean. Two hours of nothingness. Especially when you haven't fished that place before, that's a problem. Let's get the mat ready. There's the fish. Scaly down, I'm doing all this. It's only a small one, guys. It is still a pike with a new venue for me. Now let's take a look at him on the map. Well, listen, we all know it's not a big fish, but the first fish from this park lake where the lady told me, well, she didn't say guaranteed pike, but the intimation was there's no shortage of pike in here. Obviously, it gets pretty well thrashed because it's, well, it's like urban piking, really. It's an urban environment, although it's a park, all the rest of the population is right on top of us, traffic going past, everything. Let's get this guy back. I wonder if there is a bigger one out there. Gone. Look at that camouflage on them. Fish on, guys. Fish on again. Oh, a bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Bit, oh yeah, nice fish, nice fish this time. Oh my God, oh my God, it's all coming good. Oh, he's come off, he's come off. How sweet, a branch, and now I've lost a fish as well. That's a good pike too, look about six, seven pounds. Good job he's park here with kids, because otherwise the language would be pretty horrific, especially with the geese. I've just been running the float round on that little bit of ripple out there, just enough to move the float and I was twitching over the side of this weed and I think, I think I've got a pick up. It's ever such a faint bump. Probably a small fish, I don't know if he's still there. Now I think he's dropped it. And that's what you get on hard fish waters a lot. You've just got to give him no resistance whatsoever. Yeah, he must have dropped it, that's a shame. No, oh, I felt a tap. No, he dropped it and I missed it. Very, very small pike I feel that was, just on the margins of the weed over the back edge. But, Maybe you can see over there, I've got my float, so I've cast it across the wind and letting that 
wind act on the line and drag it round. Now I know I've not caught anything on it yet, but it's a bonus fish because I'm, you know, fishing away here. I'm, I'm, I'm twitching with this spat all the time, covering more ground, and that is a bonus fish. And you never know a dead bait like that just drifting along uh, might just pick up the extra big fish, or indeed any fish. Now another thing you can do when you're working this sort of technique is get that out. Oh, what a cast! That deserves a fish. Okay, put the float down. Obviously, it's only the wind that's going to drag it around there. So, well, nearly had the camera in then. Then what I do, that float is settled, the sprats sunk to the bottom. If it's not for the wind and the wind does die off, I might have to move it manually. So, I want to cast out my sprat that I'm going to twitch. It's going to take five seconds to sink. So, in that five seconds, I just do this. Pop, pop, down. Five seconds are sunk, I've twitched the float over there, and then I can start twitching the free line sprat in another part of the swim. Very often you'll just look back and suddenly see, oh my God, where's that float gone? So it's always worth, if the wind does die, giving that float a little tweak. You can even do it look in between twitches with your free line sprat, just give that float a tug, and that could just lift the sprat off the bottom, which is just enough to give you that strike. Another little tip, guys, is when I buy a load of sprats, I tend to split them between very large ones and pack them myself. So I pick the large ones out and I use the smaller ones for maybe sea fishing or somewhere there's little tiny jack pike to amuse myself, say, on a drop shot rod. And then I keep the big ones, which are slightly heavier, for twitching. So when I do go in the supermarket and buy a load of sprats i do break them down and switch them about grade them and put the bigger ones in for casting give me a slightly bigger casting weight when you do cast them you want to toss them in the air rather than swish them like this hard don't swish them hard they fly off you want to go right through the skull we've done it on other ones showing you how to hook them i'll just crank this one in so there we are there's the sprat the vb hook hooked through the nose quite a long drop and then I just toss it high in the air and use the wind as well to get it out there. Five seconds to sink gives me five seconds to jiggle that float and nearly drop the camera in the water. There you go, nothing new there. Right, fish on guys. Small one. Oh, it's a bit better. This is a bit better. I'm going to come under my other other rod in a minute. There he is, guys. A little bit of back winding going on there. Do you like my rod rest here? Look, I just stuck it in scaffold pole. That's my float rod, which is down there. I'd really like to get this fish, though. Just turn that round there for you. Fingers crossed he doesn't fall off. It's not a big fish. Back winding. The last fish was a big fish because I lost it. You know what all fish are like. You lose the good ones. Here he comes. Here he comes. Yes. Thank goodness for that. Yes. Much better fish. Let's see where he's hooked and we'll get him back in the water ASAP. There you go guys, not a big fish again. Maybe five pounds, something like that. Just kept moving, moving, let the float drift around. And to be honest, nothing on the float, every single take I've had has come to Twitch Brat. Well guys, just going home. Take number seven. I wouldn't like to say what's going to happen to this one. I think I'll strike the line or snap and I'll fall in the water or something bizarre. Feels like a small fish. Check the drag. Pretty sure it's a, it's a take. I had about 20 false takes. I don't know if you've ever had that where you, your line pulls into the bottom of the uh, branches and stuff like that. But I've, I've got a bit of slack line here. 
So I figure if there is a fishy coming towards me. Let's live dangerously. Oh, snag. Could have sworn blind that was a fish. Oh. Come out the snag and got into another snag. It is a fish. A snag. Oh, come out, come out. I think I'm out, I think I'm out. I'm out. Oh, well, it'd be nice to, wouldn't it be nice to finish on a fish, guys? Wouldn't it be nice? Oh my god. I've had to hook seven. I haven't got three yet. Not a big fish, not a big fish, but he's in the net. He is toast like a ghost. <laughs> Gonna make me late for what more carp though. Got the odd leech on him this one. Not a big fish again. Just a, another pike. I hope you've got some tips there. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm not going to say goodbye yet because I am just about to pack up and get across and try and catch you guys a carp late afternoon, early evening. Depends on the traffic. Nice fish. Let's get it back. There's a few tips and techniques on there and you can see it does work. Guys, it is, it's three o'clock. It's died on me. I've talked to some other people around the corner. It's died on them as well. They're float fishing, just a very odd small skimmer. If you fancy coming with me, if you'd like to join me, maybe three o'clock, four o'clock. I could probably get to somewhere like Watmore, which is closer uh, to where I live, a shorter drive. And I've got some ground bait in the car. That's all I've got with some ground bait paste. If I make some paste up, soak it for when I leave here, then maybe we might be able to finish off even with a carp, make a day of it. And that's the beauty of being an all round fisherman is you just change and change and change, even down to changing venues. Carp and pike in one day, that'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? One more last cast, up the tree, hopefully not. Right, I'm all set up, made them. Well, a pretty good time, it's quarter past four, but I'm here at Watmore. Trouble is, it's really open here, and it was nice and sheltered in that town, in the old urban environment, but out here, it's absolutely whistling. So I've got the brolly up behind me, and maybe you can see I've got a pair of quiver tip rods just here. I've got on those a ground bait paste, a single BB, but I've had to come uh, up the, well, I'm gonna call it the, uh, the, the lee side, I want to be out the wind if I can. It's blowing off my back and I'm just casting out down there. Not too far, just an underhand swing, maybe two rod lengths, three rod lengths out. And this is what I'm using. I've got some ground bait paste made from uh, pellets and all mushed up. And I've soaked it when I left. So it's been in the car for like, I don't know, about 45 minute journey back I had. And I'm making up these pellets about this size. So I've got my ground bait set out there and that's what I'm using on the hook, just that and a single BB. That's all I'm using. Fingers crossed this stuff will get me a bite. Maybe not yet because I've literally only just thrown a load of uh, mashed up uh, bread, ground bait, anything I could get hold of that was in the car. Um, didn't bother with a sweet corn because I figured I'm very, very happy with using this ground bait paste. <laughs> I missed it. Oh, that's you. That's you. That's you, YouTubers. Again, you're so trouble. You are so trouble. Oh no! I've had a bad morning pike fish. I mean, I've got three, but I've missed. I've lost. I've lost four. Now I've missed that fish. Anyway, let's put the camera down. Fingers crossed. Actually, I'll show you what I've got when I'm here. Let's balance that there for a second. There you can see my ground bait paste, and I don't know if you can see that, but I've actually got the hook point showing. I squeezed it slightly flat. And there, just let it go down through the camera frame. There is my single BB shot. So I'm just literally got it resting the carp. Hopefully won't be put off by that BB. Just, it stops it blowing around in the wind and it should hopefully anchor it on the bottom. So I'm only just out there and I've got quiver tips and I've got my buzzers there in case I glance away. You know, sometimes you just, something distracts you, a duck or a fish rising. You look away, next thing you know, the tip's doing this and you've missed a bite. I mean, I just missed that bite, but that's your fault, not mine. I'm going to get it back out there, fingers crossed. We might even be able to get pike and carp 
in the same trip. Get this on, guys. I was messing about with the ground bait and I thought, what's that noise? Didn't even hear the beeper go. Well, could be, could be pike and carp on the same trip. I have to watch this other line and I have to watch the limit of the camera cable as well. Right, here we go, here we go, people. Feels like something like a sort of Three or four pounder. It looks like a mirror boiling out there. Man alive, there is some big black cloud coming behind me. How that weather, the fickleness of the British weather is beyond belief. Got that brolly anchored down. This might be my one and only chance. Oh yeah, pretty mirror, pretty mirror. Come on, babe. I'm not gonna mess about those YouTubers. Give me, oh, oh no, oh no. Jesus. Oh no, last time I came here I've got this. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It was you saw me winding and put it in the margins. <laughs> and you wonder why I just gotta put my foot in it, guy. You wonder why I was so impressed with that ground bait paste. It is absolutely about the most deadly thing I've ever fished with. Hopefully this other one stays on the right. Oh my god, the double whammy. Well, I think the safest thing to do is to put that one in the net. Pick this one up. Put my foot on the landing net. And get this one, which is a common. Wouldn't it be nice to get a picture of both? Oh my god, I can't believe that paste didn't come off. I must have made it too stiff. I hope that's all. Oh, this is a good fish. Oh wow, hang on, Graham. Hang on, forget the pike. Forget the pike, buddy. Forget the pike. Holy cow, this is a good fish. Come on, babe. The other guy's in the net's okay. Oh, this is a... I can't believe I just put my foot on the rod and just hoped that the uh, fish might come. Because we're on barbless, it might come off. This is a nice fish. This is a nice fish. This... Oh, man, it's not a million miles away from doubles. Testing, testing, anybody in there? Testing. I've got to clip this on. I've got two fish. I'm in a total screw up here. What do you think, guys? I reckon that's 12 pounds. It's a fat one, isn't it? Look across the back there. Beautiful fish, beautiful pair of fish. And there you go, pike and carp in the same session. I still can't believe it pretty much myself. Look at that. I reckon I deserve a bit of a pose with these two. What do you think, people? Lovely couple of fish. A gold belly, gold belly on the mirror, and a great big fat common there. That is a really nice fish. I've no idea what footage we've got, but I'll tell you what. Seven pike, three landed. I've only just started, and I've got two nice carp. That's where it pays to be, the all-round angler. Got the head cam on now because... I think that's the best thing to do. I cannot believe I wound that bait in. Hopefully it's all on camera. So I wound it out of the way, left it in the margins. I reckon that's a fish that's come in for ground bait that I've actually, when I've rinsed my hands off, you know, a bit of ground bait. So I'm only just out there. I don't want to go too far. I'm a little bit far left, I think, on that one. Let's leave him down there. Let's get the other one out. You couldn't believe it, but it's, it's just a little, it's just a come here and this wind is shocking here. It's just sheltered around the uh, urban areas. BB shot there. About a size four there. 
a big hook because I'm using a decent sized piece of bait and I put it on like this but I just try and leave that you can see this I'm hoping you're seeing it just trying to leave that flat don't even know what that pig bit is might be an old maggot or something left in the rubbish I had in the back of the car just lob it out there uh, that's a little bit too far left I'll move this one to the right <laughs> two at once eh my god what an angler what a dangler that's the saying there's anglers and there's danglers I'll tell you what, I won't be looking away here too much because I feel a rub might be going in. How much ground bait have I got? Quite a bit there. And there you go, guys. I do not speak with forked tongue. 4.15, let's say the bait's been 4.20, 5, 10, 15, about 18 minutes. Double, a double hookup. Jesus, that rub went then. A double hookup, one of which was definitely, looked a big fat 12-pounder to me. I'll tell you what, I haven't got long, I'm going to chuck my... More of this, more of this sloppy stuff in. You never know. They're on the bike because of this wind. I think that's what it is, to be honest. And that's probably why the pike were tough. And what I've done down there, if you can see, I've scattered a couple of balls of ground bait down there because occasionally they come in the margins. I think it's too cold at the moment, but you never know. With fishing, you never know. Ideally, I'd like those a little bit higher up there so I can see the white of the quiver tip against the dark of those trees in the back background over there. Sometimes you can just push the rod up and just turn it once there. So I just see the tip move. I don't mind a little bit of slack in there. It doesn't take much to move that uh, ball of bait. It looks like that might be uh, Andy, the owner, coming around over there. Wherever we go, guys, I'm here with Andy. Andy's the owner. Hiya. He's come down. <laughs> uh, it's a good job I had hold of the rod because it was well on the way and he took a piece of that bait, ground bait paste, on the drop that time. It's been a bit quiet. I've been sitting talking to Andy about all various things fishy and I thought I'd better put a bigger piece of paste on and bingo, fish on, as they say. So I'm pleased catching those pike earlier, but I'll tell you what, it's much easier here at Watmore trying to catch these carp. If we get it in, it's not a bad fish, this one, you know. He's going to get right in those rushes if we aren't careful. No, he's come out. I'd say it's not a bad fish. surprised to be honest people I would be really surprised given that that sun's gone like that in the evening has turned halfway reasonable it's still off out front of me here I just thrown what I thought was the last bit of bait in and I've baited up closer I think I've been overcast in the baited patch like that now what I'm doing is I'm bringing it back I'm letting this sink but I'm holding the line like this, just while that bait sinks. If you can see that. And if I get the merest hint of a tweak or a tug, I'm gonna nail it. And that's touch ledger in with a line across my fingers. Okay, the bait's now on the bottom. Open the bait line, just slack, gently slack a bit of line. I don't wanna move the paste bait out of position. Close the bait line. Just gently tighten up. That's it, I get the second rod out, keeping an eye on the first rod. Because here at Watmore, sometimes when this stills off like this, you can get a sort of second flurry of fish coming through. There we go, hopefully you can see this guys. Squeeze it, mulch it all up, but leave that point showing most important. Okay here we go, I'm using that pile on there as a bit of uh, guidance and I'm just going a gentle lob, feather it, that's perfect, shut the bell. Any time from now they could take that on the drop if they're actually 
feeding, like I think they might be starting to come on the feed, I don't know. But I'm happy enough anyway with that fish. It's now on the bottom. No bites on the bottom. We're going to open the bale. Just let a little bit of line spill off. Put it down there, close the bale, tighten up, watching that rod all the time. I just barely turn, turn the reel handle like this, just to put a bit of tension on that tip there. That's all I'm looking for. A little bit of tension. It's amazing how long this last cast is going to last. Five minutes, I should say. It's a nasty wind, though. Even though the sun's come out. There's not one other angler on this lake. They've all gone home. Generally, this is a good time to be fishing. Well guys, I'm hooked up again here. Look at the bend in that rod. It looks like carp number four. Not a bad fish this one, not a bad fish at all. I just get this chappy, I think I might call it quits. Yeah, that's a nice one. Let's get the net, which we always leave as far away as possible in the totally awesome show. Nothing, nothing new there. There's the fish. Do you mean get him first time? Oh, he's out. Classic cock up netting. In the net, and it is. Here we go. A nice mirror carp. I think I might call that quits. The wife's already been texting me. What time did I call this and all that sort of thing? Now, which is the better side of this one? And there we go. That. I believe is a nice looking carp. I like the colour of that top of his eye there. Really sort of sort of purpley turquoise to it if you can see it there. Well let's get him back. One more cast eh guys, what do you think? One more cast. <laughs> Not a bad old session is it? Well guys thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Have a really good session. Please with that double figure carp. Please with any other carp. Pike, carp, I mean, two different venues, same day, got to be good, isn't it? Thanks for watching the show. Look out for the totally awesome outdoor show. That's Mike's outdoor channel. Big on bushcraft. And don't forget to look out for the free download of The Awesome Angler. Lots of fishing stuff in there. Might even be some bushcraft coming there, I don't know. It's very, very popular. I've got one eye on you and one eye on the rods. Let's pack the brolly up. I never get packed up otherwise.